Hello, Hank Hong fans. Since MS Paint is an art program, which it's, I've dealt in my previous two with the image group, which had some coordination challenges, but also possibility for that awesome crop tool and this uh, awesome resize and skew tool that gave you more than, you know, turning objects by more than 90 degrees, this tool and the crop tool that can help you get around not using the eraser tool so well and then I covered the tools group here yesterday but had troubles with the pencil tool and the eraser tool and maybe even the color picker tool um, we now get on to well, all the rest of the tools here brushes shapes size colors and just maybe I'll do layers today. Layers, as you can see, either I can't make them work well or they only work partially well in this tool, in this in this application. Uh, anyway, but this being an art program, instead of continuing the do these videos tool by tool selection image tools like I've been doing. I decided I'm going to get artistic and at least in this video cover brushes through colors, maybe even do layers. So this could be my first video in excess of 12 minutes. <laughs> Hope y'all don't mind. Being YouTube, you probably don't, but you'll probably think it's unusual. So yeah, but yes, um, no, it's not that you're... I'm not saying you're drinking well. I mean, hey, if you play Rebel Galaxy Outlaw, they have Red Star Beer and Grill and grill Whiskey. I'm not saying you're drinking too much of the Red Star Beer and Grill Whiskey if you see the minute counter go past 12 minutes. But anyway, on to what I'm going to be doing today. Um, they have the brushes tool here, which I think is great because you can do, well, things like calligraphy, pen brush strokes, and... So if you wanted to do that, yeah, there you go. There's calligraphy pen. Um, it defaults to brush. So this could be helpful. This reminds me of the tools my mom used to use when she used to do oil painting. Some of the places that I lived growing up, my mom would, if we owned the house, would oil paint on the walls. It was awesome. And there were some oil paintings my grandmother had. I don't think my mom gave them to her, although she might have got inspired by my Grammy, by my Grammy Miner's oil paintings. And um, so, yeah, I'm just going through here. I've worked my way down from brush to calligraphy to calligraphy pen to airbrush which I think was this one here, and I just did oil brush, and I'm basically just doing all those in a default black to crayon. So you could actually use this and do crayon-like stuff with kids in your family. To marker, marker is another good thing that kids like. And if you did a video and did something with kids with marker, ooh, markers got potential, baby. We can party on here because you could use colors like red and do the whole or yellow or you know the primary colors kids like. Yeah, that's a dark red. Let's do a regular red. There we go, red, orange. We're going to do green because it might show up better on a computer screen. Green. But we are not done yet with our brushes. You basically just to choose a brush and then go down to the white here and have your fun. We got natural pencil. I like that in green. And we got watercolor. Oh, very realistic watercolor. I've done some paint things in watercolor before. Maybe some as an adult. I know a lot as a kid. So I think that's pretty darn cool. You know what? I'm going to use the layers tool. Use some of its strengths here. 
I don't really need that anymore, but in case I do need it, I don't want to just to file new and start with a new white canvas. So I'm hiding this puppy. And I'm unhiding this puppy. And we're going to go back to fill here. We're going back to white. Select all. Collect a question. Alright, well now you know why I don't like the layers tool. It just doesn't seem to behave the way it should. Or the way I'm accustomed to. Oh, here it is. Okay, so we've got it white now. And a matter of fact, so I can see that I know what I'm doing, let's delete this layer. Delete layer. All right. So we're turning this invisible. That makes the screen gray. We start a new layer. We make that visible. It's still gray. We've got our fill tool. We select all. Go back to the fill tool, select white, and there we go. Our new layer is white. Let me just double check, see if another layer would also be white or what it would be. Nope, the layers start out as gray. You got to fill it with white. Okay, delete layer. But now that we got another layer, let's party on with some shapes here. And do we have them? And let's start with something simple like a circle. Let's get let's not do the lines. Here's why I want to do this. Undo, go back to black. Okay, your color one black is usually for outline. Color two is usually for the inside of an object. So we've got black. Now, what's the quality that that outline should be? No outline. Make it white or invisible. That's actually good. Let me show you why that's good. We're going back to solid here. Let's say we do a fill. Heck, let's say we do a circle with something besides white. So we're going to do orange here. Why is that not something besides white? Well, then to heck with it. We're going to take this. Ah, uh, here we go, because it's defaulting to no fill. So now... We're going to take that, now that we've got a fill, and I don't know why it's black. Okay, so how about this? There we go. Okay, so, your, on your mouse, your left hand key, when you use a tool like fill or eraser, is your left hand key is going to be the top color, usually black. Your right hand key is going to be the bottom color, in which case I made it white. And why did I want an orange thing with a circle? Well, here's the reason why. Because now I can illustrate the great awesome line 
um, just different ways you can use this needs to be bigger okay now I can demonstrate the ever awesome line tool there's your solid outline that we use there's your no outline sometimes you use an object but you don't want an outline you don't want it to look drawn you need it you need a sort of 3d effect you could be making a snowman graphic for Christmas or whatever it is you're doing you could be doing some sort of picture frame and you don't want it to you want to have like um, flowers or something or hearts around like uh, the edges here but you don't want to have like a line that signifies this is an outline you want it to be an outline but you don't want it to look like one but if you're going to use an outline you can do all kinds of things we're still going to make this bigger still so my outline ideas show up okay so here's where the here's where the outline tool comes in it even gives you a preview you can do solid outline crayon which is thinner marker which is still thin oil brush which is thinner natural pencil which we've gone over and watercolor so there's some of your outline options now here's something else you can do too shape fill how are we gonna fill this so again like with the brushes you can do a texture so we're gonna do yet another this time we're doing a, a square if we can do it get it Oh man, it's got rectangles, but no squares this app. Well, that almost doesn't work. I mean, because, you know, you listen to too much Huey Lewis music, you know it's hip to be square. Oh, you can make the rectangle a square. So let's say we do that. But let's say we want to change... Let's say we want to change that fill so we can see what we're working with. I really don't want black. Let's say purple. Let's go a little prince here. Purple rain, purple rain. Let's go with some prints here. We got purple. We got purple now. We're going to re-choose our object here because... I want to see what we're going to do. Well, let's get back to it. Let's undo that whole, that entire square thing. I want to go back and well, I want to redo it. Not that way. Uh, I don't want to use the selection tool. Square tool. Okay, so here we go. Now. We've got our square, and we've decided we want an outline. We've got our square. No, we've decided we want our fill here, but we want it to be, here we go. Now we got, instead of solid fill, we can do crayon. If we don't like that, we can do, so kind of your marker, which looks a little lighter. I think crayon looks most distinct. Oil brush. True oil brush thing going on there. With the little white lines in the middle. Kind of like with the more white lining. Natural pencil. Watercolor. Or we can just keep it solid. Or we can decide we really don't want to fill. We'd rather have it white with just a purple outline. There you go. So there's all kinds of things you can do between the fill tool and the outline tool for your objects. This is really cool. Now, let's draw an octagon and really mess with colors here. Uh, 
because now to show you any colors I haven't used here that I should have we're gonna stick with the purple outline we're gonna go with a solid fill but we're gonna start changing that fill color huh. all right instead all I've done is change the outline let's leave that outline purple but let's go down to color 2 here so we can change the fill and are there beautiful colors to use in this app or what some of the colors I haven't used brown rose color for your pink yellow light yellow lime green as opposed to the primary green up top here regular green um, turquoise blue gray so different than primary blue and lavender which is a lighter seems to be now I'm aware males and females perceive color differently and females can perceive more colors so this is a very male statement here I'm making but it seems to me that the lavender is a lighter version of the blue gray could be mistaken about that and of course if you want to do other colors you're like I'm sick of the initial choices well we can get down and party here you've got dark purple I just all I did was go into um, gonna cancel it here all I'm doing is going into the edit colors thing and now we can really boogie we could use the slider and come up with all kinds of color combinations but just look at this the basic colors have more variety than um, what's in the default here in the default colors palette so we can just party on here I mean we've got if we want it for an outline for instance uh, Yeah, let's just see what we can get away with here. We've got dark purple. We've got lavender. We got pink, baby. Let's see where the pink as opposed to lavender. Let's see where this goes. Now we got our pink color. We're going to choose OK. Pink's down here on the list. And our shape is pink. And we got more stuff we can do. I'm going to do that one more time just to show the, the possibilities here. Ooh. We got a better blue. We have a dark blue. Let me show this baby off. Not the blue that's on the... We got two dark blues. Regular dark blue and darker dark blue. So let's get down. Like This is really like a navy blue to me. And... Let's see if we can do blue again. We got a fourth dark blue. This is incredible. That's almost black, really. Um, and this also means your Hawkman, again, messing with the primary colors and darker colors. I think this means I'm male in my color perception and preference thing here. But that's okay. Anyway. Um, we're just going to leave it at dark red though which almost looks brown to me so just color me James Brown there's your colors so this is all some of the possibilities and tools you have to work with and it gets better than this let me go ahead and just uh, I don't feel like erasing any of that let me choose a third layer. Lay it on not thick, baby. Let's just fill that all with white. Select all.
I don't really want to do that. Let's keep that purple bottom there. But let's do this. Do white. Do fill. There we go. Now we got another white layer. So, the last thing that I want to cover is all of the shapes you have here. I mean, this is... And there are some Microsoft apps with more shapes, like a good copy of Word will have more shapes, but it's a great place to start. So... Oh, and I need my object to be something besides white here. Give me a nice, seeable color like black. And why have I chosen a line, but I'm not getting a line? There we go. So we've got that for a line. You can press the, you say, well, I need my line to be straight. Well, you can press the shift key and keep that puppy perfectly straight. I believe you can do, yeah, you can do a perfectly straight diagonal. Which if you use your zoom key, you can check in on the difference here. The not perfectly straight diagonal is kind of ragged. This one not as much so, but that's your line tool. I'm just going to erase that pretty much. Oh, here we go. Here's your curve tool or spaghetti tool, like I like to call it when I work with kids. <laughs> when I do things with kids for um, with my girl cousins and my little cute little girl cousins in my family. So there we go. Um, you've got that now. That you made a line, but it needs to have a curve in it. You can go do this with the curve tool. So you can make jump row people or a smile or whatever, whatever your groove is. And of course, the circle that we've been using. Maybe I need to go back to white here on the inside there we go the rectangle that can also be a square if you don't make it too big the rounded rectangle or square if you need those beautiful rounded edges here here and here which you can see that difference <clears throat> here as opposed to there Rounded as opposed to not rounded, just kind of squared off. You've got a polygon tool. Let's see what this does, because I don't think I've ever used it before. Ah, uh, polygons. Ooh, that's so you can make like triangles and things or octagons without using the triangle tool. Very awesome. Better control over that. Then you've got your triangle. Then you've got your right triangle. Ooh, and if you really did it right, you don't have a left triangle tool, you can make with the polygon tool a left triangle. I don't know if I have the coordination to do that right now, but you could do that. Um, one of the aspects of my mobility disability, sometimes I have coordination for something for that minute, that hour, that day, that morning, that afternoon. I don't see me doing a uh, a left triangle right now. Just a little life experience there. There's your polygon. If you don't want to make it with the um, no, that's a pentagon. So if you don't want to make a pentagon with the polygon tool, there's that. Here's a hexagon. A pentagon has five sides. A hexagon has six. So we got our hexagon. There's a two hexagon with that. And then we've got uh, your arrows, which are great for flow charts for certain kind of work, like programming, like I was doing last month. Or any other thing that might need it. Or you could do humorous things about indoors and outdoors for like children's art. Uh, 
direction arrows to teach children about that sort of thing, you know, in buildings and stuff. Or teach new drivers about one-way street signs. All kinds of cool things. And then we've got our stars. So if you're like, I'm sick of star ideas and sci-fi I needed in my art, we've got a four-sided star here. We have a five-pointed star here. Four points, five points. We got a six-pointed star here. <clears throat> We've got call-out things for cartoons. For thought or heck you could do this with a photo you could do a call out and make it kind of cartoon like for thought or speech I've done that before so you got uh, that's your rounded rectangle call out you've got your this one's called your um, oval call out by the way, this is really nice of them to give you call-outs. I used an art program where you had to make your own call-outs for artwork, and it took me a while to learn. So at least this gets you into that groove easily. And then you've got cloud call-out, or usually thought bubbles, and not to mention the heart, which, of course, has all kinds of good uses there. Besides the real life, having a heart, caring about people is very good. But in constructing art, you can't go wrong with a, with, an, with a heart shape. And then you've got lightning. So if you're into Thor comic books, or Greek mythology with Zeus, or Shazam, the, the DC superhero, there's your lightning. So <clears throat> I think at this point, you see me use layers in a limited fashion. There may be limits on this. This is, in terms of layers, it's not like uh, Paint Shop Pro or Photoshop where you can group layers and do all kinds of things with them. Not there yet. It may be someday, but Microsoft hasn't uh, given us that in constructing MS Paint. And I may have had some other difficulties in doing these videos, not just because of learning it as I'm going along, but also because of my coordination problems. So maybe if I do if I do art instruction again, y'all will be much more happier to see me work with Paint Shop Pro because my knowledge will probably <clears throat> overcome some of my coordination difficulties, which knowledge can help with that, can help you to improve execution if you have coordination problems. Or at least in some cases, or many cases it can. Definitely with cerebral palsy, some aspects of it are many, depending on your specific situation, and perhaps other situations as well. So I hope this was cheerful and helpful, and it looks like this is going to be a 30-minute video. And uh, enjoy, and I am going to try to put chapters in this, so you can go to different parts of it. No guarantees, but I'm going to try to do that, my first video with chapters. So enjoy. And, gets, and I hope this is useful for y'all, and it's been a happy demonstration of just what you can do in a, whether it's photo art or the phrase for non-photo art, line art, whatever your art situation is on the computer, I hope these videos have been helpful, whether it's specifically with MS Paint or any other app you might choose to use. Just have fun with this, and I'll talk to you next video. Bye now.